so the agency's third priority is getting missile defense architecture on Guam. Uh, how do we get the Guam effort on schedule amid the challenges in developing infrastructure on the island? I mean, Guam was just hit with uh, another typhoon. It's not abnormal for Guam, but you know it, it, that was quite a, a bit of damage there. Uh, what are you doing to get infrastructure in place? What are the challenges? <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, great, great program. I mean, Guam is a critical U.S. territory. Um, out there in the Indo-Pacific region where it's really, you know, as we know, um, you know, threats are increasing in that, in that area. It has historically been an important spot for the Department of Defense, uh, logistics hub, other capabilities out there. As you know, we actually have a THAAD battery on, yep. on the island now. So as the department looks to increase our footprint on Guam, uh, we were asked uh, to start to look at architectures to lay a defensive, an integrated defensive system out there. So very early on, I'd say that um, it was always, it is a joint Army, Navy, MDA effort to look at the possibilities along with, uh, you know, the organizations up in, up in OSD. So what, what, what came out of those studies was uh, um, an architecture that had elements both of missile defense system assets as well as the Army. So what's happening right now, um, as I'm sure you're following, the, the Army has been designated as, as lead service. So um, the, the various sites that have been identified, and, and I, I'll touch on in a second, the, uh, the environmental impact statement work that, that is embarking on. But, uh, but, but right now what we're doing is uh, making sure that the, the overall integrated master schedule for the enhanced air and missile defense design for Guam is, um, is uh, achievable, mm -hmm. affordable. Um, as you know, there's some elements of the Army design and they're bringing in some new capabilities. Yeah, absolutely, um, <laughs> it's a lot of new capabilities. <laughs> and, and then I'd say it, it's not just this enhanced air and missile defense package that we're putting on, there's other department you know, initiatives to put other capabilities you know, onto Guam. So the department is looking holistically at that and making sure that we have a sequenced, logical um, plan put together that that um, you know brings the defensive measures that we know we want to bring to to the territory, as well as is uh, you know safe environmentally. You know, making sure the public is is fully um, on board and aware that we do all those sensitive uh, environmental and cultural studies um, as we go to place you know, components of the weapon system in a distributed fashion across the island. So right now that, uh, that teamwork is, is uh, happening and, um, you know, it's, it's exciting to see. And I, I said I'd touch on the environmental impact statement. So we identified Army and MDA, the, the sites, the, and predominantly, you know, almost exclusively on um, DOD lands, you know, federal lands right now. Um, and we, we took the lead prior to Army being designated as lead service and trying to pull together from a weapon system perspective what those sites are and get the process started. Because it is one of the longer processes yes. because there's, there's elements by statute or law that we have to do. Um, and then a lot of planning goes into these different sites, right? So, um, so we took the lead in kind of packaging up the weapon system piece under the environmental impact statement um, process, which is the, the NEPA process. And we actually had those first public scoping engagements a couple of weeks ago on island. Okay. So we had uh, you know, several public meetings. Uh, the teams went in and talked to the uh, elements of the legislature and the okay. Guam local governments, uh, did some media engagements, and we got some really good feedback. So that process is, is uh, also advancing.